Whether you're a whittler, a gardener, a hunter, or a DIYer, who among us can't use a good quality knife for our tasks? And what could be better than to use a knife you've made yourself? Well, Rockler is making the process easier than ever. They've partnered with Sarge Knives to offer four custom knife kits, two folding blade knives like this one, and two fixed blade hunting knives. The kits come with all the metal parts you need, and they're made of 440 grade stainless steel for corrosion resistance. And the knives have nice thick blades for durability too. The only thing missing from these kits are the wooden pieces to make the knife handles called scales, but you can make those from a couple pieces of scrap. I'm going to make mine from this piece of straight grain cocobolo. Making one of these knives takes about an afternoon and the process is fun and easy. Let me show you how it's done. Start your knife by resawing and planing a piece of stock for the scales down to about a quarter inch thick. Make it long enough to lay out two scales end to end and a little wider than necessary. Since this is thin material, it's a good idea to tape the stock to a carrier board with double sided carpet tape to keep the wood flat as it gets thinner. Two pieces of scrap wood along the edges of the carrier board make it easier for the planer's feed rollers to pull the scale stock through. So on this folding knife, the wooden scales meet these raised metal bolsters on the handle and form about a seven degree intersection. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the ends of my scale blank at the miter saw to seven degrees. That'll help make sure that the grain pattern on the scales is parallel to the handle of the knife. And that's an issue for me here because this cocobolo has a really straight grain pattern to it. If your scale blank doesn't have a real strong grain like this, you can probably skip these angle cuts. So just like you'd hope from a good knife kit, the edge on this blade is razor sharp and we're going to be handling it a lot in the steps to come. So before you go any further, wrap it with at least three layers of electrical or duct tape to protect yourself. Work smart here. Now lay the knife on your scale blank so the bolster is snug against the end of the wood. Trace around the edge of the liner to form two opposing scale shapes. Draw the shapes on the side of your workpiece that will face out when the scales are completed and mark the scales with an L and an R to keep clear which scale is which. Each scale will be attached to the metal liners with two tiny machine screws in epoxy, so drilling for those screws is your next step. Use a finished nail or a 1 16th inch diameter drill bit to mark a center point for each screw hole, tapping the nail or bit through the liner holes as a reference. Now to drill those screw holes, you're going to need a 3 16 inch diameter brad point bit to drill counterbores for the screw heads, and a 3 32nd inch bit to drill pilot holes for the screw shanks. Now what's important here is that the screws aren't supposed to project through the back side of the scales by more than 5 64ths of an inch. So drill some test holes first so that you can experiment with your drilling depth and then stick a screw through each of the holes and check the protrusion on the back side just to be sure. Once you've got an accurate test hole, drill the four counter bores into the two scales at the center points you marked previously. Then switch to the 3 32nd inch bit and aligning it with the spur center points created by the brad point, drill a pilot hole through each counter bore. It's time to cut out and shape the scales. You can use a coping saw, a scroll saw, or your band saw with a narrow blade. Just make sure that when you cut out your tracings, you're cutting about a sixteenth of an inch outside your layout lines. That'll leave some extra material for the shaping process to come. Now you're ready to start sanding the scales down to their final shape for the knife grips. First, screw the scales to the liners temporarily and wrap the bolsters with more tape to protect the metal during the sanding process. Then install a coarse grit sanding sleeve in your spindle sander or a sanding drum in your drill press to sand the two scales until they're flush with the edges of the metal liners. Keep the knife moving to prevent divoting the wood. Now you're ready to shape the thickness of the scales so that the leading edge of the scales is even with the metal bolsters and the handle has a nice contour to it. I found the easiest way to do that was to clamp my handheld belt sander in a vise and then hold the knife near the front wheel of the sander so the leading edge of the scales are right over the front wheel and then gently rock the knife back and forth to do the sanding. 
I continued that sanding process until the backs of the scales were the same thickness as the bolster ends, but I left the center of the scales thicker to give the handle a nice contour. When the front to back curvature is done, soften the sharp edges of the scales at the spindle sander and then add more contour across the handle's width. It's easy to do by holding the knife perpendicular to the belt's travel and rolling the knife gently across its narrow width. And now, whether we like it or not, it's time to start hand sanding. Here's your opportunity to get rid of all the scratches that came about during the rough shaping process and do some additional contouring work by hand. Start with 80 or 100 grit paper, work your way up to 400 grit, and don't skip any grits in between. But the process actually doesn't take that long, and it'll make sure that in the end, you get a nice, smooth, blemish-free handle. When you're satisfied with your sanding, go ahead and apply finish to the scales. I started with a coat of de-wax shellac to seal the oily cocobolo I used for my knife scales, then followed with two coats of oil-based poly. After it thoroughly dried, I buffed the finish to a shine on a cloth wheel in the drill press. And after your scales are polished, you're ready for final assembly. You could just screw them on, but I'm using a little epoxy to make sure that my scales will never come loose. If you go that route, use some acetone to clean off the metal liners just to make sure there's no manufacturing residue on the metal. After that, screw on the belt clip and your knife is done. So there you have it, a keepsake project that's as practical and fun to make as it is beautiful. Check out all four of these custom knife kits from rockler.com and thanks for watching.